aquí. hello guys welcome welcome to my live i changed the live time so you will forgive me if you waited a bit earlier i, I announced it on my ig page i'm switching my live hours to 1900 east african time so okay i'm still not so good with this whole So welcome guys to my live today and I like I posted recently we are going to be talking about pricing of crochet custom made wear or any other uh, handmade item or project so if you have any questions you can comment them below if you don't have you can also comment later on if you have any other questions but i'm going to be giving you live the things that i think i personally i consider when i'm hand making my products how i come up with my pricing so hello thank you so much for joining so if this is the live you've been waiting for please comment down below and let's dive in um so far we are still a bit of a small number so i'll try to receive some greetings while i wait so that we can dive in in today's session uh, on fridays it's when i'll be posting the topics that we'll be covering every sunday live and last friday's topics i posted they were about pricing handmade crochet slash handmade products or talking about yarn sizing and a lot of you voted pricing crochet products which i know has been a big issue i've gone through it because i have moments where i crochet stuff i give a price and i realize i cut myself short like I'm going to be like okay i'm charging this cardigan probably 70 dollars and then in the process you realize that you've actually cut yourself very very low you didn't consider a lot of things you didn't consider all the necessary things you have to balance with for you to come up with a price so So guys welcome i'm going to dive in because i don't want today's session to be so long if you have any comments please put them down below if you've missed this live of course i'm going to share it on my youtube you can always go and join in so we are diving into our topics because so far we've already used four minutes four and a half minutes so i repeat today's topic is about pricing handmade items if you have any complications with that please comment down below if you don't have any just put down what you think or your hurdles when it comes because a lot of you have been in my inbox asking me how do you price your items how do you know okay this is what i have done the time i've put in how do i do it hello thank you so much for joining so right now i'm going to explain to you in depth the things i consider i'm not going to say what you should consider because we all price our products differently 
you and I can do a product, but then how we sell it is not going to be the same. I may charge mine $50, you may charge yours $100, someone else will charge $30. It all comes back to you as a person and the value you're giving yourself and all the effort you've put in. They say, like, when you're selling your handmade products, this buyer is actually not just buying the product. The buyer is also buying the days of frustration. They're also buying the distractions, the different tries. Because some of us, we actually open our pieces like several times i can start a piece it reaches somewhere and i'm distracted maybe i was doing account and then i reach somewhere and i realize i got distracted i'm not so sure if this is 40 or 60 or 30 and then you have to open the piece fresh so they are buying your frustrations as well they are buying your tries and they're also buying your joys because when when you're selling your product that means that's your final piece and you have it to your satisfaction. You already feel like, okay, my piece is ready now. I can put it out for sale. But if the buyer went behind the scene to see the efforts, the frustrations, the sleepless nights, the giving up, because sometimes you're working on a piece and you're like, maybe, maybe I should first try something different. And you find that the person has switched to maybe working, if I was working on a dress, now I'm working on a bikini because I was too frustrated that I needed a break from the dress. So, personally, these are things I consider when I'm pricing my products. If I miss out anything, please comment below. And also, please like this video. Just give it a thumbs up. Even a thumbs down if the option is there and you you feel like you don't like it it's also okay so my first thing is i consider the material when let me break them down first like when i am going to price my product i consider the material the expenses of putting the labor and the profit because the the material is going to involve like that is a different case the labor the expenses when you're crocheting you're not just crocheting without adding in extra costs because it's not like you just wake up and and you crochet the extra costs the expenses i mean includes even your sleepless nights you're depriving yourself moments of maybe chilling and doing something to actually crochet that piece so you have to involve the time is part of the expense and then the labor of course you have to pay yourself people go to work for companies they earn salary because of their labor this is you working for yourself and you also deserve to get that payment and then the profit of course at the end of the day you don't want to put in a lot of work and then you get no returns you will need to be able to also feel like, oh my God, I have, there is a joy that comes in gaining back from your effort. So let me first talk about pricing expenses. When I talk about pricing expenses, I'd already hinted about them. That includes time, but that's not all. How do you market your work? You market your work through social media. You don't just post your work you announce your work you share your work that's advertising so that is among the expenses you have to buy you're not online for free you buy your wi-fi you buy your hot spots you, you you pay for your router that is an expense and then managing your selling platforms it's all part of expenses. You don't be on those platforms for free. You pay taxes too. You pay honestly owning your virtual shop there. You also pay for it. So I'm thinking all that is part of pricing expenses because whatever you're getting back should be able to feed your other 
sweat like that is your social media managing your advertising you have to be able to pay for your promotions you have to be able to make those collabs and stuff so it all comes back to you pricing your product what you get back from that profit will it be able your return is it going to be able to help you be able to like get something back feel motivated and then i'll talk about the labor in depth when you're buying your items you put in money you don't get free and of course you go order online or go to a shop even going to that shop you involve in transportation and that is not all there is your labor involves taking pictures some of us even try our best to make sure we try to buy a nice phone because i want to be able to take a good quality picture to use for my marketing of course if i'm going to use um a low like maybe my picture quality is really bad even if my piece is really nice someone may not really see it because the picture is not just showing that but at the same time how you're setting to do your photography or videography how the time you're putting in the creativity you are putting in should also be considered when you're trying to price your product then the other thing i will say is packaging we don't some some of us don't really look at packaging as a big deal but packaging in in your business is really important how you deliver to your client speaks so much about your company so people invest in money to get like customized parcels to get like to make sure that when you're packaging for your client it's actually going to give them the morale some people some of us actually are impulse buyers so when i see a packaging and it's looking nice sometimes i actually buy the packaging i ignore what's in the package so you invest so much in that so you have to consider all those costs then the extra supplies extra supplies i'm talking about you don't just you need a yarn and hook you need scissors you need stitch markers you need you need good lighting you know some of us can't even crochet in the dark because you feel like you have a headache you're straining too much so all in all when i make a piece let me say this is the piece i have made and i'm putting it up for sale i'm going to consider the expenses i did put in when i was purchasing the yarn that i'm going to use that is my first priority and then i'm going to consider even the transportation of course like just buying the yarn doesn't end there what's the point of me buying probably um maybe eight euros or eight dollars a roll of yarn but then it has been delivered at three dollars technically that yarn is not eight dollars it is twelve dollars or it's not seven dollars it's 14 or 13 dollars because at the end of the day you didn't walk to the shop you actually put in your own money to go and buy so i would encourage you get like a book or a diary i have mine i usually write down every expense i put in when a client says i want uh, a bikini I actually write down the costs I've put in first priority the costs I've put in to purchase that yarn including transportation delivery or whatever if you bought online and then I'm going to consider the labor of course how much you as you how much what do you think is your worth do you think you deserve $15 for your labor do you think you deserve $13 for your labor? 
do you think you deserve twenty dollars for your labor get that labor now add it on the expenses you put in in purchasing the material that's the transportation whatever or delivery fee plus the cost of yarn and you add there now the labor you sitting down and crocheting labor the other thing is now the time you know there are some jobs that tell you oh we are going to pay you five dollars per hour or i'm going to pay you fifteen dollars per hour they know the value of time you have to give it to yourself as well when you're pricing your product first ask yourself how long is this piece going to take me do I, am i going to take three days two days one day four days a week a month so you cannot just price it as simple as something you would have made in one hour you have to involve in the time that you're going to spend working on that piece and then of course that was me talking about time yeah your creativity it's not it has nothing to do with labor your creativity is so 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 much important that when you work on a piece sometimes you sit down create a piece and you're not so sure is this piece going to be able to fit a size small a size medium a size large so sometimes you actually go through the hassle of crocheting and opening and crocheting again and opening you keep opening because your mind just tells you there's something missing maybe you should have actually chained five instead of chaining three or maybe if you're working on someone's hip area your mind will feel like that's after you've already chained but let me say i've chained 80. And then, in the long run, you realize, no, this piece is going to be small. I should have used a size, maybe instead of 80, I should have done 100 or 110. And then you go back and open the piece to try and fit, to uh, try and fit in the measurement. So even that is stressing when it comes to your labor, and all your mind you sleep with when you're exhausted because it's frustrating that whole opening and crocheting again and opening and crocheting again it's really exhausting please give this video a thumbs up and comment below if you have any questions because I made this video because you guys asked for it and i would love to be able to deliver or answer something that you really wanted to know so um finally when it comes to pricing don't forget profits the profit part is important ignore the material the time the transportation the labor of course you have to gain everyone does something to be able to gain back to be able to gain back so when you crochet you have to be able to know that okay now that i've crocheted uh, uh, how much am i going to charge this piece i have the price of the material i have the price of the expenses the labor put it together in a total and then let me say your total has said 80 dollars and now you have to add the profit how much do you think you deserve for the effort you put in for the energy you have put in so personally it depends on the different piece some pieces are really quick some pieces are really take a lot of time like weeks days a few days so after that i always try to make a calculation and try to write down what I think um, I needed I, I deserve like I've made maybe this piece how much do I deserve for it for it do I have to just calculate the material the labor and stop at that no 
I'm going to see the piece and then I'm going to calculate how much I think I deserve as a profit when I make this piece. So if I have calculated all the expenses, the material, the transportation, the labor, the time, I'm also going to now ask myself. So I'm going to be like, okay, I'm going to add uh, $20 for a profit or $15 for a profit or $5 for a profit. Don't be too ambitious because at the end of the day, when your clients love what you're delivering to them, they will keep coming back. They will keep wanting to come back. So don't over, don't put your profit margin too high, like for your piece. Try to balance a little bit. As long as you have something back, consider the first things I talked about as your priority before you add in your profit. But then when you add in profit, do it considerably so that you, you don't cheat yourself, but then you also don't cheat your customer. Because at the end of the day, it's the customer that is your priority. They are the ones running your business. If they are not present, then the business is not going to go as you wish. They are the same people, like I said in my last video, your customers are your marketing base. So I've explained more than enough. If you have any questions, you can comment. And this live is going to go for 30 minutes. So if you, if I clock 30 minutes, like I have, I've, we've already used 21, 22 minutes. So I have a few minutes to, eight minutes to close off. You can please comment below your questions because this was your request you guys voted on what you wanted me to talk about so and if i if you've missed anything please you're free to ask or ask me to summarize for you again anyways so thank you guys for watching and for the likes if you haven't liked this video yet please give it a thumbs up i would appreciate that so much and also please comment below your questions because you guys requested for this and i want to be able to deliver you know when it comes to crocheting how often do you demand the pay you deserve oh that takes me back. I'm sorry if my explanation is going to be so long. Uh, most of the times I see what I have put, I've put in, hold on, hold on. I no longer demand so much for the pay I put in because I'm very clear with my, my pricing. When a client is buying from me a piece, I clearly tell you I take 50% on pre-order because to me that 50% pre-order is like um, order confirmation. So when you pay, I'm assured that you need the piece. I don't crochet pieces over promises. You have to give me the 50% pre-order. And then I know that is, I confirm the order. And then the 50% is paid at the end during delivery. If you're from far, like you did, you pay, you finish the pay, I deliver the piece. So that's how I, I managed to do my stuff. And it has worked for me very well. I don't go through the whole, pay me, you took my piece, what was, hey, do you do? line do you do line you yeah i do i do lately i haven't been doing that a lot because it depends on my clients preferences some of them want the lining some of them don't want the lining so most of the times i explain to them even when they are buying like a bikini or a dress it's like the mesh dresses. Someone wants a mesh dress, but they don't want to wear it as a cover-up. So they may ask me to add a lining for them. 
it, it's the same thing when it comes to the skirt some people feel like they can't trust yarn enough because they feel like it's going to be see-through or something like that so they will they request for lining so i yes i do line my pieces but i leave it as a choice for my clients not all of them want to have their pieces lined and yeah any other questions we have four minutes left to the end of this live i'm sorry i did change of time and i announced it late so i'm going to share this video on my of course on my feed youtube feed you can whoever has missed can always watch it any other questions okay i'll keep watching please i want to clarify everything to do with pricing handmade items so please if you have any question mention or com comment below if you want to join this live send in a request i will confirm um open for anything and yeah before i forget you guys um you need to be you're welcome lista and tell me how much do i earn per, per piece i can't really mention because each piece has different pricing um each design has different pricing so i can't say per piece i earn this per piece i do earn this it depends on the like i said at the end of the day it's the time i've invested in if the bikini is going to take for me um sometimes people will say oh i want a thong i'm not going to to charge lingerie equal equally the same with when someone asks for a short there are different pricings but i'll do that for the next session as for today that's a topic for another time so and like i was still saying if you're pricing your products sometimes clients feel satisfied when you're clear enough to put it online and be like these are my this is what is available it depends on the piece that is available that time because you may be having um let me say you you have your you've created a, a new design of a bikini you are going to want to price it considering to the design not how you you make you price all your pieces because they have different designs they have different sizes good afternoon thank you so much for joining the live we are talking about pricing handmade materials or handmade items so you can ask any questions anything you want to know and i'll be able to respond and i have already given details on how i price my own pieces you if you have missed the start of this live for your swimsuits or tops do you use acrylic yarn only no 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 i don't actually for my swimsuits i rarely use acrylic i use it's it has acrylic but it's more of half acrylic half um cotton so most of the times when i have clients and they order for bikinis i usually use half acrylic that is 50 percent acrylic 50 percent cotton yarn is the one i use a lot because it's always good it really gives people irritation i would suggest a lot more of acrylic yarn for dresses it has that stretching effect really so i would re excuse me i would recommend it more for dresses skirts shorts but for bikinis i would prefer something a bit elastic or not so elastic i mean i'd prefer something more cotton like because it's so gentle to the skin but with a bit of acrylic in it because a bit of stretching would be really nice for me as well 
but if someone asked, was to ask me the yarn they would recommend for their bikini personally i would recommend ali's cotton gold or ali's diva stretch it's actually the best absolutely the best yarn to use for this so yeah any other questions or please give this video a thumbs up if you haven't or a thumbs down if you think <laughs> you want to give a thumbs down any but i would appreciate it and thank you so much guys for always putting in your time to join my life i know you spare a lot of time to join my life and i'll be posting every friday on my ig on, and on my youtube community page questions for sunday live you're welcome lister and thank you so much for being present so i'll be sharing the questions two questions you guys whatever you vote the most is what i'll be sharing for on my youtube as the live topic that day so this time around my topics best with pricing handmade materials and talking about yarn sizes people still don't know that that's a really really big deal yarn sizes can dictate how your piece comes out so it's something important that we need to talk about but that will be for the next time and yeah um running out of time if you guys have questions comment if you're out of questions it's been so 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 nice catching up with you guys i do appreciate you for always coming through and i'll see you next sunday 1900 east african time i think europe that is like two hours behind us that is five 5 p.m. I changed the time because I was in box with people telling me thank you so much with people telling me that my life and their hours are not matching so I'm trying to keep testing different different hours until we are all able to fit in the same time zone or at least our time zones are able to connect in terms of me having this live so i'm going to share this video if you've missed please go and watch it i love you guys so much thank you guys for being my biggest support you i don't even have words so um i've run out of time i have to go and have the same live on my tiktok so if you've missed here you can go and join there and you can always keep commenting your hours your time zones of where you, of where you are so that i can be able to put it all together and create a proper time period for our live sunday live or if you prefer saturday you can also comment below it depends because i know people are busy i don't want to dictate their routines so have a good day give this video a thumbs up again or thumbs up or thumbs down whatever you feel like i'll go with it we'll see each other next sunday i will be introducing the same video live videos on my instagram but like i said i need to connect the time properly because a lot of you guys are not from my time zone and I can't guarantee I'll be able to balance both. USA has like two, three time zones. And then there is Europe. And then there are people in other countries as well. So it's hard for us to connect at the same time. But yeah. Thank you guys. Have a good day. Be blessed. If you've just come, I have already explained so much. You will find this posted on my YouTube. Have a good day.